Let me show you how to add fireworks to your live stream in just a couple of seconds and have them be in the shape of any image or video file that you're currently using and then have them explode in that shape. It's really easy to set up. It works for Streamlabs and Stream Elements and it comes with a bunch of awesome features. Hey, what's up everyone? Derek from nerdordie.com and these firework alerts are available right now on our website. So if you wanna head over and grab these, you can but let me show you everything that's included real quick. So let's get right into it. With this firework alert pack, it's very easy to make them look like this. And with a couple of tweaks to the custom fields, you can change basically everything about the pack down to the text colors and even the particle types that we're using here to get an effect more like this. And this is with the same uh, emotes or images that you wanna upload. So if you guys like stuff like this, please make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on as we have some really cool free and animated overlays coming out in the very near future. So before I get too far into things, I wanna say that out of the box, you can install these and it will have a bunch of preset options. But if you're really into customizing things for your stream, then I highly recommend watching this video. Also, please let us know in the comments below if there's features missing or somehow we can kind of adapt this product to be better. Anything that you wanna see, I read every single comment I have since our YouTube channel started, and I'd love to hear what you guys have in mind for this. With everything downloaded, I do wanna cover what comes with the pack out of the box, because this does rely on using your own custom images, but we wanted to make sure to include stuff for people that didn't really wanna spend time customizing it as well. So the first thing that you can see is all these fireworks casings. These are gonna be the defaults that we use. You can basically use these to explode different shapes and it will look nice and pretty with all these different colors. The second thing here are these gifts and these will show up under the username if you enable it in the options. So if you get a donation and you wanna have this shown off, you can add that as well. And then there's seven different ones that you can choose from. And then next we have explosion sound effects. There's five different ones and these will play every time a firework explodes. And then finally there are launch ones as well. And there's three different ones here and when they actually go off, these will play. And we'll get into how to customize these and how these exactly work in just a second here. Most importantly, everything works with Streamlabs and Stream Elements in the exact same way. During this video, I'm gonna use Streamlabs just cause I'm more comfortable with it but I'll show some of the stream elements options as well. And just let you know, everything's the exact same. It's just located in slightly different places. So let's go ahead and get this installed for Streamlabs. I'm already logged into Streamlabs here. And if you're not, just go ahead and do that. But in the actual download, I'm gonna go into the Streamlabs folder and then double click the alert file here. And it will bring me to this nice little import feature that lets me create a new profile. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and call this one fireworks. And then after that hit create. And once that's kind of completed, I'm gonna just click use on the one that I wanna import into. So just to let you know, you can create as many different themes as you want. And I highly recommend doing so when you're installing new alert packs. So I'll just hit use here and then we'll be basically set up in Streamlabs. So I have some unsaved changes from my last one. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue here. The only difference if you're a Stream Elements user is that you just need to make sure to select the proper platform that you're streaming to. So you just click Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook, depending on what you're using, and that will create the new overlay. Grab that overlay source URL and add it in as a browser source, just like you would any other overlay element through Stream Elements. Okay, everything's installed, so let's quickly make sure it's all working. The first thing we want to do in Stream Labs here is just copy the widget URL and then add in a browser source inside of your OBS Studio. And then I'm just going to paste in the URL here and make the width 1920 and height 1080. I highly recommend using that if you can, or at least matching your canvas uh, size as it kind of lines up to that. So I'll show you what that means here in a second. Let's click test subscription. And you'll see that everything fires off, the fireworks are shooting, and then the alert demo content is added in. So if you're one of those people that just wants to get set up really, really quickly and just change your alerts, let me show you how to do that first. And then we'll get into all the kind of crazy options that we built in. So the first thing you want to do is select the alert type that you want to edit. So I'll go to my subscription here, and then I'll scroll down to the custom fields. 
And this is where you can actually change out all of the alert types. So you can see here that I've already used one of the preset star animations that Streamlabs has in. So you can just select that. And if you want to upload your own, just click the upload button and then use uh, the upload feature here. I got a couple of icons here on the desktop that I'll just quickly upload and change this one out as well. And then just go ahead and add this last one in. And once we've selected that, we'll go down here and we'll hit save settings. And sometimes with stream elements, I hit save settings twice and hit test subscription. And now we'll see that the star fires first with our logo and seems good after, and then the two other ones that we've already added or had added from the default import. That's pretty cool, but of course this is a nerd or die alert product. So we wanted to add basically everything possible under the sun that you could customize, uh, especially with all these different options. I'm just gonna go ahead and select a couple of the uh, other default ones here. I like the link one, and I think there's like a Yoshi one that they have as well that I think looks really cool. These are basically the firework shapes that you're going to be firing off. Something I did want to mention really quick is that you can use animated GIFs, but they won't be in their animated form. This kind of just took up a bit too much with the processing technique that we're using, so we decided not to include it just yet. Um, so if you do want to include something animated, we recommend using a video file. Basically, all files are supported, WebM, MP4, PNG, whatever you need to upload. And the animated GIF, if you do use one, it will essentially use the first frame of the GIF, but be in its static form, but it'll still be compatible just in case you don't have a static version of your GIF. Now, this option right here, you can use to add a circle mask around the alerts if you want them to be circular. Uh, so go ahead and use that if you like. But before I continue too far, I wanna mention a couple of things. Now, the alert duration here will depend how long the alert is shown through Streamlabs. We can't really change that through our custom code. So you have to make sure that depending on how many fireworks you're shooting off and how long your delay is, which we'll get into in a second, is set properly. So make it just a little bit higher that you need, um, but not too high because then some people will have alerts that just don't show up for a long time. So if you set this to like 30 seconds, the next alert won't actually show up until 30 seconds after, even if the animation only lasts like 10 seconds. Make sure to kind of feel out where your alert duration needs to be and change it there. And then the other main option that I want to talk about is sound. The sound effects, especially for Streamlabs, will still work. You can upload your custom sound here and still use the sound uh, volume here. Now, this will play right when the alert starts, and we have built in some sound options that you can customize, but if you really want to use the built-in Streamlabs one, you can do so right here. All right, so I promised options, and I hope this delivers. Uh, the next part that I want to cover under the custom fields here is the alert message options. This will pertain to basically everything that you see that is a username or the amount of uh, subscriptions or months that they subscribe, this area right here. If you like, you can actually disable this completely by using the option right here, but we're gonna leave that on. The most important parts are really the templates here. So if you wanted this to say new sub or to translate it into a new language, you can do that here. And if you really wanted to, you could grab this name template and put it up here and then cut and paste the new sub for the bottom. So this is the area on top, and then this one is the area on bottom. So I'm just gonna leave it kind of how it is and just edit it very slightly and have it say new sub rather than new subscriber. Again, you can put it to whatever you like. So for the sake of your eyes, I'm gonna just zoom in here just a little bit as well. And now we have the text box vertical offset. This is basically how far the text box is from the top. So when it's set to zero, it's going to be right where it was at the beginning. But if you really want to push it down here, we can set it to like 600. And I'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and hit save settings and then test it again. And we should see it end up a lot lower here. So just in case you don't like it being all the way up at the top, you can change that up there in the text offset option. Now I'm going to set that back down just because I personally like it there. And I'll just go ahead and move on here to the delay or leave the alert message on screen time. This basically just tells you how long the alert message is going to stay up. So we have it defaulted to six seconds so that people have a chance to read your alert. Now, if you increase this, remember that you might need to increase your alert duration up here that's built into Streamlabs. Moving on, we have the maximum height of the GIF. 
So first, let's go ahead and enable the GIF and talk a little bit more about that. So if I turn this on and we have this heart GIF uploaded here, which again, you can upload whatever GIF or image that you want to use. Um, this will actually show it underneath the username here. So with an enabled, I'm just going to double click save settings here and then play another alert. And we'll see that the heart GIF appears right here and we'll stay on screen with the actual content of the alert. So again, we included a couple of options for you. If you want to switch them out, use what's found in the download or just use whatever you like that you might already have done for your stream. An option that kind of correlates to that is the maximum height of the image or GIF. So right now it's set to 40, which is 40 pixels. So if you want it bigger, you can increase it. If you want it smaller, you can decrease it. The final option here is the user message offset. So if you have a message to show from your users with the alert, it will still work with this alert pack. And if you want to move it up or down, you can do so here. Basically, the more you increase this number, the farther away it's going to be from the actual alert. So just play around with that, especially if you increase the size up here of the uh, GIF or image that you're using that shows underneath the name. Next thing on our list we have are the text options. So this is very straightforward. This will be the size of your top text. This will be the color of that font. This will be the size of the main text. And then this will be the color. So I'll switch both of these just to like a red, just so you can see. And I'll pump this one up just a little bit and pump this one up just a little bit as well. And then you can use some crazy font if you want. Uh, I always just pick lobster because it's one of the most obvious fonts to see the difference of. So it's going to look completely terrible. But once we actually test this, you'll see that you got the new font and the new colors as well. So if you like that, go ahead and use it and send me a uh, screenshot on Twitter and I'll probably make fun of it, but whatever. All right, so I'm just going to set this back to a font that I think looks reasonably good rather than lobster. Um, next, moving on, we have some content color options and basically these will be the options for that text area as well. So it's a little bit hard to see unless you zoom in or look at uh, one of the higher res images or uh, demos, but there's a border color that you can change. So again, I'll just change it to red so that you can see it. Uh, you can change the background color of the top area. I want to just change this one to um, like white as well. And then the username, I'm going to just change this to black and I'm going to set the opacity of it all the way up. So it's very, very obvious. Again, this is going to look terrible, but I just want to make sure that you guys can see everything that's going on. So we have this background, the border color, and then the background for the top area. And since the font is the same color, you can't see it. So make sure if you're changing these settings to make sure that they're kind of contrasting each other. So in this example, I'd probably set the font color to like a black or, you know, something that contrasts it. Okay, so it's time to get a bit crazy. Underneath the firework animation option section here, you have three types of fireworks that you can use. So there is the emote popper, there's the classic, which is a video type um, firework, and then a none option. So the video type here with the classic is a throwback to our old firework design that we did way back in the day. And it's just a nice video that will use the same text and other options that you've set. Uh, so if you want to use that, you can, and you can actually change the color right here in the firework main color. And that only works if classic is enabled. And then you can actually set it to none. So if you have an alert type or a variation that you don't want to show fireworks to, uh, you can use this option for that. But of course, we want to stick with the emote popper type here, the image popper, video popper. And we can see that there's different particle types as well. So the default is actually orb. And let me show you what polygons looks like. And um, just to kind of drive this point home, I'm going to bump up the particle size as well, which will be the size of your particles. And then I'm going to go ahead and bump up the shell size as well, which I'll explain in just a second here. So the shell size is what is actually the width of the image when it's shooting up. And you can see that the polygon one has them explode in this polygon type of particle. And there's a lot of customizations that we can continue to make to that to kind of tweak it and make it something you really like, which I'll keep talking about here in just a second. So back to the shell size again, this will work for both the orb and polygon section. It will be the size of essentially the casing or the firework itself as it's being launched. The particle size again, you can be ridiculous with it. You can set it up to um, up to 100 actually. And when you launch these, you'll see that it just explodes into something kind of 
uh, ridiculous here and fizzles out. And then if you want to just go crazy, you can. And I'm just going to set this back at its default, which I believe is six here. Now we move on to particle spacing. The lower this is, the more kind of condensed your particles will be, but it'll also use more GPU. So if you're using an older GPU, I recommend not really going too low. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down here to six, and we'll see kind of the difference um, between six and what it was set at at 20 to where it's just a lot more particles and it keeps that kind of shape a bit more. So it definitely looks more interesting in some cases, but I think uh, 20 actually looks pretty good myself. So that's kind of why we set it there. All right, so with that back at the default, let me talk about this next option, which is the fireworks stagger delay. So right now it's set at 0.6, and this basically means the amount of time to wait before shooting off another firework. So right now, every 0.6 seconds, one will be shut off. So let me just increase this here to like two, and you can see if we save this again, we'll have a test and see one, two, and another one will shoot off, and then it will continue to do that until it's done. So again, make sure to adjust the alert duration to what you need it at. Otherwise, you might have some issues with them getting cut off a little bit early. Now we can set the stagger back down to around 0.6. Again, if you lower this one, it will use more GPU as well. The closer the fireworks kind of explode, the more intense it's going to be. So when I say it uses more GPU, we've tested this up to millions of particles and it did perform fine within OBS but I definitely don't recommend it if you're streaming and gaming at the same time to just max out the settings. Plus, uh, it kind of has a unique look if you don't kind of tweak these into all their maxes. But if it's a style you want and your PC can handle it, go ahead and use it, of course. But make sure to test things out and see if you're dropping any frames or anything like that. Now, we have this other option here called explosion minimum and maximum size. So this will basically be the maximum size that your particles expand to, and then of course the minimum as well. But I do want to mention something. If your shell size is set to something higher than the maximum size, the shell size is basically always going to be the minimum. So no matter what, the shell size is going to be what it kind of defaults to. So if I go ahead and test an alert, you can see that even though my maximum isn't that high, that the explosions are still pretty big. So make sure to keep that in mind that you want to keep your shell size uh, lower than the actual minimum. But of course, you can play around with that and get the options that you want. So if you want something kind of crazy, you can have it go all the way up to a thousand. And then we can even just bump this up here a little bit. And now we should see a smaller shell size. Let's even go down to 50 here and we'll have it be smaller when it first starts out. And then it will just expand into something kind of very big. Um, depending on the random generation of the number. So it goes between those two numbers. Now, next we have the maximum spawn width. And right now it's set to 1600. So that basically means a firework can spawn between uh, 1600 pixels. So it'd be 800 from the center this way and then 800 from the center this way. So that's kind of the area. If you want to tighten that up and have it all the way down to 10 and have them all spawn in one line, you can go ahead and do so. Um, of course, our defaults are just set to what we thought most people would like, but I think it is kind of cool to have them all be in the center if um, you have a certain alert type that you want to go for. And then from there, we have two more options left, the distance from the top. So this is where the first firework is targeted to explode. So if I set this down to zero, you'll see that it actually goes ahead and explodes right here at the top, right in the center of the actual image. So we'll basically make it higher on the screen. And then if you want to make this lower on your screen, the default is set to 330. So if we go above that to something like, let's go up to 635 here and hit save settings, you'll see that when it actually explodes, it'll be targeted at a lower kind of distance and let you kind of just tweak where vertically you want these to start appearing. So I'm going to just bump this back around to 330 and go ahead and move to explosion speed. And this is a multiplier that allows you to increase the speed of the explosion. So if I go all the way up to 100, you'll see that when it actually uh, explodes, it'll be a lot quicker of a animation. So if you want them to be a little bit more snappier, you can go ahead and do so. Um, you can sit between 0 and 10 as the default. Now, that's basically all the options. And like I said, let me just show you the polygon one here really quick. 
I think with the polygon one, it's nicer to have the shell size um, quite a bit bigger. And then the maximum uh, size is bigger as well. And then if you can make sure that you have your particle size bumped up just a bit here, and then even the spacing, if you can lower it just a bit, will look pretty nice. So let's go ahead and try this out and we can see what uh, the polygon one looks like with some adjusted settings. So it looks pretty crazy. If you're into that style, it's there for you. And again, that's kind of a throwback to the old style that we made. And if you want to have them be ridiculously fast, you can adjust the animation speed as well and kind of just play around with that and see what you like and what looks good for your design you're going for. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch everything somewhat back to default. I'm going to go back to the orb version here. And let's move on to the next section, which is the sound effect options. And this won't have too much of a visual, but I want to make sure that you guys understand what's going on here. So you have your launch sound volume, which will be the sound when the fireworks actually shoot off. And then you have five different options for your launch sounds. So now one, two, three, four, and five will actually work with one, two, three, four, and five of the images or videos that you upload. And then you can use one, two, three, four, and five for the pop sounds, which has its own slider. And that will work with the images that you upload as well. All right, so we made it through all the options. I really hope you guys enjoy this product. We spent a ton of time on it. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like. Uh, if you made it all this way, I can't believe it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, let us know in the comments below if there's anything we can do better um, or improve about this as well. Uh, I've been Derek with Nerd or Die. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.